The next black track I'm doing requires a little bit more research than normal. So in the meantime, I decided to check out the White Men Can't Jump remake to see how it stacks up against the original and do a quick movie review of it. I know these days, it's in fashion to hate on all the many remakes we get, and I get it because most of them aren't very good. I would say probably around 80% of them aren't good, but every now and then, we get one with some actual effort put into it and not just a money grab. Surprisingly, there aren't very many black movie remakes. There are a few sequels, but outside of the Bel Air TV show, House Party, and now White Men Can't Jump, black movie remakes are coming up a little short. So I would say the market is wide open if filmmakers wanted to put some actual effort into it. But about the actual movie, White Men Can't Jump 2023 is directed by Cal Maddock, who directed mostly music videos before this, and wouldn't you know it, also directed the House Party remake that was released earlier this year, which was his directorial debut. Like I said, the market is wide open, and this seems to be the only guy who's taking advantage of it. It was produced by well-known writer and producer Kenya Barris, with Ron Shelton, who wrote the original 1992 film, also getting a writing credit. Now, it would have been easy to just take his original story, do the exact same thing, and just update the visuals, but I'm happy to report that White Men Can't Jump 2023 actually goes out of his way to make itself different from his source material. And you know what? I really liked it. I noticed online that the opinions have been a bit mixed, and I try not to read the reasons why, because I like to go into things blind and to formulate my own opinions of it. That's why my review is like a month late, trying to find time to watch both movies while simultaneously avoiding social media spoilers challenge? Impossible. Just like the House Party remake, White Men Can't Jump 2023 retains the same general story but changes the names of the characters and their motivations. The original White Men Can't Jump starred Wesley Snipes as Sidney Dean, a working class street baller who was trying to hustle his way out of the hood with his family. In the new White Men Can't Jump, his counterpart is a former star high school basketball player named Kamal Allen, played by Senqua Walls. This might be a slightly controversial take, but I think Kamal is a much more interesting character than Sydney was. Now don't get me wrong, there was no way that Senqua Walls was going to be as charismatic as an actor as Wesley Snipes was as Sydney. Wesley Snipes was all energy and pretty much made that film. However, Sidney Dean's character motivations were weak at best and barely touched on in that original film. Kamal, on the other hand, struggles with the belief that he let his father and his family down by losing his temper and getting arrested just when he was about to enter college and possibly make it into the NBA. The whole movie is about his anger issues and his impulsiveness and how it's at the root of all his problems. Yeah, he also wants to get his family out of poverty, but his internal struggles are far more relatable this time around than they were with Sydney. This time, it's mostly all about Kamal, whereas in the original, it was primarily about Billy Hoyle, played by Woody Harrelson. Billy had a gambling problem in the 1992 film, and large portions of that movie were dedicated to him trying to hustle enough money to pay back some mobsters he ripped off because he's always been impulsive, especially with money. His modern counterpart is Jeremy. Yep, just Jeremy. I searched all over online for this dude's last name, and everywhere you look, it just says Jeremy, even in the credits. I don't seem to remember anybody saying it in the movie either. As a matter of fact, barely anybody in the movie has a last name. White Men Can't Jump 2023 hates last names. Anyway, he's played by rapper Jack Harlow, and I have no real knowledge of his career before this. He's not really my kind of rapper, other than that was Poppin' song. I like that song, but I gotta say, I thought he did a pretty good acting job here. He takes much more of a back seat than Billy did in the original, but what's here is serviceable, if not a little delusional. Jeremy actually did play in college, but ended up tearing both ACLs, which cut his career short. Now he hustles to save enough money to repair his legs well enough to get back on a team. I find it funny that in the original film, the title White Man Can't Jump was meant to be taken metaphorically, basically saying that nobody takes a white basketball player seriously. Which in itself is kind of funny, because Billy Hoyo did plenty of jumping in the film. He just couldn't dunk. But in this new film, Jeremy almost literally can't jump, because both of his legs are shot. The movie makes it a crutch for Jeremy to overcome, no pun intended, but I think overall, his story is kind of weak. 
there seemed to be a conscious decision to write the story for Kamal, and a realization set in about halfway through that Jeremy needs a story too. It is made up for by just how likable the character is though. He's positive about everything, almost to the point of annoyance, and is meant to be a counter to the perpetual angriness of Kamal. I went into it thinking a first time rapper actor would be terrible, but he surprised me. I'm a fan. Anybody who's seen the original will tell you that the women were a big part of it, specifically Rosie Perez as Gloria. While the 2023 version doesn't completely bury them under the plot, it does throw a little dirt on them. I think Rosie Perez set the bar so high as the long-suffering girlfriend of Billy that an attempt wasn't even made to replicate it. In the original story, Gloria was all about standing by her man, even going as far as to study useless facts to get a spot on Jeopardy to help him with his debts. I was always fascinated at how they worked that into the plot because just saying it out loud sounds silly, but her role ended up becoming iconic. Now I love Laura Harrier as an actress, Lord knows I do, but this movie didn't give her much to work with. They only made sure to check one box, white guy with a black girlfriend, check. Her character's name is Tatiana, and gone is the erratic rapid fire delivery of Rosie Perez and the strong take no crap attitude of the Gloria character. It's replaced by an unbelievably naive girlfriend who doesn't even aspire to do something cool and different like go on Jeopardy. What does Tatiana strive to be? A dancer. Nothing against dancers, but how many times has that dream been used in plots? If we were sticking with the game show theme, couldn't she at least have wanted to be an American Ninja Warrior or something? I think I'm more surprised that they didn't try to give the dancing dream to the actual singer and dancer in the movie, since it also stars Tiana Taylor as Kamal's girlfriend. Thankfully, she gets a lot more to work with, and it was only up from the 1992 version since Tyra Pharrell was massively underused in that film as Sydney's wife. Another way it sets itself apart from the original is the focus on a father figure. The characters in the original were a little older, so of course there wasn't really room for parents. But in this one, Kamal is younger, so his father plays a huge role in his backstory. Gotta love when a movie includes a father figure and the relationship isn't dysfunctional. They even got the late great Lance Reddick to play Kamal's father, only the second movie to be released following his unfortunate and untimely death. Also, one thing that I thought I would hate, but ended up liking, was the comedy, which in the original was carried almost single-handedly by Kadeem Hardison. In the new movie, it's provided by two guys named Renzo and Speedy, played by Miles Bullock and Vince Staples. With the sad and sorry state of comedy in general these days, I thought they would be cringe and annoying, but I found myself cracking more than a little bit of a smile at numerous times, so that surprised me. So I've gone over some things that I do like about the movie, and there's some other small things like some subtle background nods and some callback dialogue. But what are some things that I don't like about it? Well, my biggest issue with the new movie is just how depressing Cinque Walls is as Kamal. I get that the character's life shot an air ball and he's trying to <clears throat> rebound, but for him to be reinventing such an energetic character, I would have liked to see him inject some kind of life into it. It's weird to say that a first time actor upstaged a more seasoned actor, but uh yeah, Jack Harlow murdered him on his own film. Another weird thing I don't like is when the film actually does try to recreate some things the original film did. It just can't redo it with a modern take. No, it has to go ridiculously over the top. There's like this unwritten mandate that says a remake has to do the same thing but times 100. You don't. You could just do the same thing and keep it grounded. You don't have to add all this mustard and seasoning on it. Like when Tatiana tries to will say distract Jeremy while he's driving same as Gloria did in the original. It fits Gloria's character, but it doesn't fit Tatiana's at all. But that unwritten contract says you have to include it or how else will people know it's white men can't jump? It's not like it's in the title or anything. Also, the music score kind of sucks, sounding more like a sitcom at times than an actual movie. Aside from the license tracks, of course. I can let it slide though, because you have to remember that this is more of a TV movie and was never intended to be a film for the movie theater which usually has higher standards. Overall though, I truly like the movie, and I think it's a far better remake than it's getting credit for. It's for sure better than that new House Party remake, but that's a review for another time. My grade for White Men Can't Jump 2023 is a C-. The movie is just different enough to cross over and drive past the original, 
even if it does only go up for an easy layup. And that's my review for White Men Can't Jump 2023. What did you think about the film? Let me know in the comments below. And also, let me know if there's any other modern movies you'd like me to review. Also, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and tell your friends about my channel. And until next time, I'll holla at you.